Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Ask Dr. Khan Show. I'm Dr. Peter Khan, board certified in functional medicine, integrative medicine, and chiropractic neurology. And welcome to the Ask Dr. Khan Show. This is Monday, October 23rd, 2017. And every Monday, we bring you the Ask Dr. Khan Show. that give you information that's going to help you solve your health puzzle and help you get well and stay well. So today, we're going to talk about the three steps to reverse inflammation and to prevent and reverse autoimmune flare-ups, okay? So a few weeks ago, I posted a question, a poll. A lot of people asked, ask, hey, how do I, you know, prevent or reverse autoimmune flare-ups? How do I get my inflammation to stop? And uh, so we're going to answer that question today. And these are, this is the three steps in this inflammation uh, module that's going to help you, okay? Now, a few weeks ago, I revealed to you that there's a roadmap to healing thyroid, to healing autoimmune disease. And uh, the roadmap consists of multiple steps. What that means is, in order for you to heal your thyroid or heal your autoimmune condition, you have to follow a sequential steps, kind of like a combination lock. If you do things out of sequence, like taking a thyroid hormone before you stabilize your blood sugar, you're not gonna get the benefit from the thyroid hormone. If you are having uh, anemia and you don't address that, then it doesn't matter what hormone you take, you're not going to get better. So you have to do things by uh, doing things in a sequential manner. This is Ellie on Instagram. Is it Ellie? Is that our Ellie? Oh my gosh. Good to see you, Ellie. So Ellie is our uh, staff that moved to North Carolina. We miss you and uh, thank you for jumping on the show. So we must do things in a sequential manner. And uh, so today we're going to talk specifically about the inflammation block. So in the, th in the roadmap that we have, our neurometabolic roadmap, the first step is fuel delivery. Delivery. So you must make sure that this block, the foundational block is handled first. The second step is immune function. That's the second step to healing thyroid or autoimmune. The third step is detoxification. Now, where do you see, now we have to move up, right? We start here, moving our way up, like a sequential step. It's like building a house, like a foundation. You have to start with the foundation because you have no fuel delivery, you don't have energy. Forget about healing thyroid or Hashimoto's or autoimmune disease. And then we move our way up. Now, so where on here do you see hormones? That's right, you don't see it. It's actually much further up here, right? It's a later step. You gotta get the foundation working before you can put on the roof. The hormone is somewhere up here. Most people, when they have hormone issues, the hormone is the last step to address, right? You always have to ask, why is your gland not producing a hormone? Many times you're not producing hormone because you can't detox, your immune function sucks, you don't have fuel delivery, your blood sugar sucks, or your essential fatty acid levels out of balance. You gotta address the foundational issues before you get to the hormones, okay? So many people just jump to the hormone. If you have a thyroid problem, and you're already going to your doctor, and your doctor says, oh, you have a thyroid issue, you gotta take the hormones. Without discussing any of these other steps, you may be missing a few steps here, and you may not get better despite taking the hormone. So if you're taking currently on thyroid hormone, or on any hormone for that matter, and you're not like, hey, I'm still not like all the way there, I feel like there's something missing, this will be the reason. Okay, now today we're going to specifically talk about inflammation. And remember, inflammation is an immune system response. Let me repeat that. Inflammation is an immune system response. If you want to address inflammation, you got to address your immune system. So today we're going to talk about this block right here in this roadmap. We're going to kind of discuss different blocks here as we go along throughout our show. And in fact, very soon, we're going to release a, uh, information that's going to teach you how to navigate this yourself so you can like, set the foundations right, right? Now, this is not the same as consulting with me and having me do functional medicine lab work to help you identify specific areas. It does not replace you working one-on-one -on -one with a doctor who are professionally trained in functional medicine and can help you with this. However, I think for many of you, you would like to be more knowledgeable in this area. I think for many of you, the feedback I'm getting is that you want to have some degree of control 
and be your own doctor? Give me a yes on the comment section if you would like to learn how to read labs, how to you know have a roadmap to getting yourself better so you know exactly step by step how to do it. Put a yes in the comment section so I know that this is something you want so I'll, I'll invest time to create something for you that'll help you guys. Give me some comments in the, in the comment section. Great. So today we're going to talk about inflammation. How do we reverse inflammation flare-ups and reverse autoimmune flare-ups? How do we control that? So under immune function, there are three major steps that we must address. Number one is leaky gut. Know that leaky gut, even though you see the word gut, the site of origin of leaky gut may be in the intestinal or in the GI tract, but leaky gut is really a systemic inflammatory condition. It means it goes everywhere. There's no such, such thing as a local inflammation. Everything, every inflammation is systemic because once you bend your elbow, these chemicals that are triggering inflammation, with every pump of blood, every pump of your heartbeat, that inflammation chemical is going to get flushed throughout your entire body. So we always get systemic inflammation. And leaky gut is a systemic inflammatory issue. So if you have thyroid problem, which most of the time when you have thyroid issues due to Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune condition, or you have any other type of autoimmune condition, you must start with leaky gut. Because when you have leaky gut, undigested fruit protein are leaking out of your intestine, and this causes your immune system to start to attack this undigested protein, and that leads to the inflammation that you feel, which may be joint pain, inflammation may show up as brain fog, inflammation may show up as bloating, depends on the person, depends on how your condition manifests itself. So everybody have inflammation that show up differently, okay? It could be inflammation in the gut, inflammation in the joint, inflammation in the muscles, so you get fibromyalgia or chronic pain, or you feel arthritic, you feel like you can't pull the ring off because your finger is swollen, you feel edema, you may feel brain fog, neural inflammation, you feel brain fog, decreased mental speed, inability to recall, memory loss, hard to get the words out, these are all neural inflammation. So you can have inflammation throughout the entire body, and that's what you feel, but the reason could be due to leaky gut. So the first step to establish immune function is make sure that your gut is completely healed so nothing is, proteins are not leaking out, creating an immune response. How do you do that? Well, you got to follow a gut repair program. So that's why I designed a neurometabolic gut repair program that you can actually download for free that will help you to follow this eating plan that will help you heal the gut. Now, the most important thing I can tell you about healing leaky gut is that in addition to eating the food or cutting out the food and eating the right food, it's also that you must heal the gut. So the example I give is if you throw a cigarette butt in the forest and you start a forest fire, once the forest fire is burning, how many more cigarette butt do you have to throw in the forest to keep that fire burning? Right? The answer is you don't have to throw any more cigarette butts. Once you start the fire, it's going to burn. That's kind of what leaky gut does. It creates gut inflammation. Okay, your gut, your gut is on fire. Your gut is on fire. And once your gut starts burning with inflammation, you no longer have to trigger it with the food that you eat. It's just going to just keep going because your immune system in your gut is such that once you start this inflammatory process, it starts a cascade where it just keep burning and burning, just like a forest fire. When does a forest fire stop burning? When you put the fire out, right? With water or rain or firefighter put the, put the fire out. So you must put the fire out, okay? And the way you put the fire out is by using specific nutritional compounds, okay? And that's where supplement comes in because left to its own devices, if you just cut out the food, that doesn't necessarily heal the gut. You actually have to put the fire out. And the way you do that is by using specific things, things like vitamin D3, help with leaky gut, glutathione, help with leaky gut, your amino acid like L-glutamine, help with leaky gut, deglycerized licorice root can help with leaky gut. There's a whole list, right? So these, pro these particular compounds things that help with leaky gut from scientific research is all in 
incorporated in a product called GI resuscitate. This is probably one of the most comprehensive leaky gut support products on the market. It contains all the ingredients that are shown to help support leaky gut. And you can find that at our online store at neurometabolicsupplements.com. And I recommend it. I've used it with thousands of clients, and we get results with that. D3 and glutathione, it can also be taken. Again, you can find it in our online store as well. So there's nutritional compound that must be utilized to support leaky gut. Otherwise, it takes too long, you may not ever get there. Scott Barling, good to see you, my friend. Hopefully, you're mending from your car accident just uh, very quickly. Okay, so leaky gut support. So we must follow an eating plan, and you can find it at askdrkhan.com slash gut repair, and you can utilize these nutritional compounds to speed up the healing of your leaky gut so you can see results quickly. The second step to uh, preventing inflammation flare-ups and reversing them and autoimmune flare-up is you must address the T regulatory cell function. I talk about this a lot. And you know, this is something that it may sound kind of like fancy name, but I feel every one of you should know what a T regulatory cell is. It's kind of like you should just know like, oh, you have white blood cell and you have red blood cell. Like we all kind of know on a very basic level. You got to know a little bit more than that. You got to know that there's an immune cell, these immune cells called the T regulatory cells. There are specific type of immune cells that, as the name implies, regulate your immune function. In autoimmune disease, or when you have inflammation, your immune system is dysregulated. Your immune system is overzealous, it's attacking your body, and it can't stop in an autoimmune disease. When you're inflamed, that means your immune system is overzealous in its response, and when you have chronic inflammation, that's when the problem happens, like arthritis. The itis means you have chronic inflammation. Remember, inflammation is not good or bad, inflammation just is. It's a body response to something or injury or infection. But if you have an injury or infection that doesn't heal, then you're going to have inflammation on a continuous basis. That's when a damage occurs. So you've got to control that inflammation. And the T regulatory cells help you modulate, modulate your immune system. What does modulation mean? In immunology, modulation means we're taking out the highs, taking out the lows. So your immune system just goes like real steady like this. In a dysregulated, dysregulated immune function, your immune system is kicking up like an allergy, right? You get like all inflamed, and then your immune system just shuts down, and you get immune weakness, and you get sick, you can't fight off infection, so your immune system go up and down like a roller coaster. That's not good for you. Remember, in everything in the body, you want to try to achieve homeostasis. That means balance. So you don't want your immune system to go up and down like this. You want your immune system to go steady like this. Modulation is where it will help your immune system to regulate itself, take out the highs, take out the lows. So how can you modulate the immune system? Again, using specific nutritional compound. A couple of things that I mentioned here for leaky gut does a lot to help modulate the T regulatory cells, vitamin D3 and glutathione. That's like the shortcut, right? That's like the thing that's gonna speed it up for you to help you heal better faster. So if you want to modulate your immune system, you say, hey, Dr. Khan, I have inflammation, I flare up. How do I control that? Vitamin D3, glutathione. Okay, Glutathione, there are many different forms. I prefer either the liposomal in a liquid, or I prefer the S-acetyl form of glutathione. So there's two different forms. You can find both of those in our online store. Now, which form is better? They're both in, about the same, in my opinion. However, uh, it's kind of like preference. If you just don't like swallow pills, then we may use the S acetyl form because that's in the capsule form. Uh, if uh, you're kind of sensitive to taste and you don't like things that taste weird, you're picky, then the pill form might be easier for you to swallow. So really no difference. Sometimes the liposomal form is easier to high dose it because you just liquid, you just kind of pour it out in a spoon, you can take more of it. But this is crucial for autoimmune for T regulatory cell function, vitamin D3 as well. Uh, other things that can help modulate T reg cell function uh, is um, your butyrate actually. So butyrate can actually help. So this is called a short chain fatty acid. And short chain fatty acids are a specific type of fatty acid that actually works at the intestine level that help with intestinal cells to 
modulate themselves to help with the intestinal inflammation, the metabolism, and help the intestinal cells heal themselves. So butyrate is a very important compound, and typically you get that from uh, bacterial fermentation by eating things that are beneficial for your probiotics to, to, to ferment against. So you want to eat fiber, prebiotics, uh, fermented foods, and so forth. Butter, if you're not allergic or sensitive to dairy protein, can also uh, contain quite a bit of butyrate for your body to ferment. Typically, we recommend grass-fed organic butter if you can tolerate it. But many people with Hashimoto cannot tolerate dairy, so that may or may not be a good thing for you to start out with. But these are just some of the quick things that you can do. If you just started out with D3 and glutathione, already you're going to be way far ahead of the game. Okay? So this is going to work, work on a T regulatory cell level. And last thing to help with immune function, this next block here, and we have going this way, it is infection control. Okay? Because many times your immune system is dysregulated because you have an underlying infection that you don't know of. For example, many people that I'm finding uh, have an underlying small intestine bacteria overgrowth. SIBO. This is quite common. Another thing that's really common is chronic candida issues, which is yeast infection. This could be in the gut, but could be systemic as well. And viral infection is quite common, actually, in herpes family virus like Epstein-Barr virus, uh, herpes simplex 1, cytomegalovirus. These viral infections can also become very chronic, means your body just doesn't get rid of it. And that can just chronically stimulate your immune system because your immune system knows you have an infection. It's constantly trying to kill these guys. And what happens is your immune system can become overzealous or dysregulated or upregulated where it just don't know how to shut off anymore. When it doesn't, then your inflammation just goes, goes, goes. And that's why you're constantly feeling inflamed because you have an underlying infection that nobody's ever tested or addressed or taught you how to address it. So this becomes more uh, you know, maybe testing centric. Although there are certain things that can indicate you have SIBO with your clinical history. For example, if you bloat every time you eat, especially with fiber C or starchy food, then SIBO is highly possible. Uh, candida, you may have chronic fatigue. If you see uh, you know, white-coated tongue, you have vaginal discharge in the female, that may indicate you have candida issue. With viral, again, the symptoms are going to be very tough to tell. Chronic fatigue, adrenal fatigue, these are usually symptoms relating to viral issues. But certainly testing will may be necessary to identify which one it is so you can do specific things to help with that. But one of the things that you can tip the balance in your favor in this area is support T helper 1 and T helper 2 function. Again, that gets a little tricky if you have autoimmune disease because there are certain herbs that you can take that can push the T helper 1 system. These are the killer cells. Or certain herbs you can take to push the Th2 system. These are antibody productions. And you can easily take the wrong supplement and push your immune system out of balance and create more autoimmune flare-up. So that may not be something you want to play with. So this is where a little bit of diagnostic testing might be very helpful. Or in the online program I'm going to create, I'm going to give you a lot of questionnaires that will take you through this so you can self-identify if you have symptoms relating to these issues. Again, this is not a medical diagnosis or anything like that, but it's going to just an educational tool and an information tool to do a self-assessment so you know what you may be dealing with, so you can seek out the right care or eat in a certain way that can kind of tip the balance in your favor. Okay? So again, to help with autoimmune or inflammation and autoimmune flare-ups, if you struggle with thyroid issues or you struggle with chronic inflammation, rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune disease such as ulcerative colitis, anything like that, the immune function must be addressed because when you have autoimmune disease, you have an immune system disease, right? So if you have celiac disease, people think celiac disease because you can't eat gluten and your gut your intestine is being damaged, that is an intestinal problem. In fact, when you have celiac disease, you're referred to a gastroenterologist because you think it's a gut problem. But when in fact, when you have celiac disease, you have an immune system dysfunction. In fact, celiac disease produces more neurological manifestations Neurological symptoms like ataxia, balance problem, neuropathy, depression, those type of things, then actual GI symptoms. So know that when you have an autoimmune disease, whether it's MS, neurological, 
or celiac, gastrointestinal, or thyroid, endocrinology problem, hormone problem, all of those problems are the same problem, which is an immune system problem because they're autoimmune disease, meaning your immune system is attacking your own body. Therefore, the focus of your management should be on the immune system, which involves these three steps. Again, there's other steps that must be addressed as well, but today we're specifically talking about this block, but that should help you to start to uh, affect the system. Now, along with this immune cells and the killer cell function here, other things that you can do that I want to mention, because these are often uh, you know, uh, very popularized, is things like turmeric. So turmeric definitely can help. And it helps really at the, at the tumor necrosis factor level. So there's another pathway here called the tumor necrosis factor alpha. And uh, there are certain things that can impact this tumor necrosis factor alpha, which also triggers inflammation. So we want to be able to downregulate or dampen that as well. And turmeric help with this spot right here as can resveratrol. So a lot of time we use these flavonoid compounds, antioxidants, at this level, and then we use D3 glutathione at this level to together have a positive immune function. So these are some of the things that you can use. Turmeric, resveratrol, D3 glutathione to help with this level here. If you have leaky gut, we need to use GI resuscitate to support gut function, along with a elimination diet to cut out all the food that may be triggering leaky gut for you. And then with infection control, you need to identify what type of infection you have, and that's what we do. We run functional medicine lab tests to help you identify these things so you're not guessing, and our clients uh, you know, experience great uh, progress when we're able to identify the root cause, and then there are specific things we do for each of those sections, depends on what type of infection you have. Uh, again, in the future, I'll be creating a program that will help you to do a lot of these yourself, and perhaps to be able to help you or your loved one to get to the bottom of why you're not feeling well. So hopefully this helps you. I love you guys. Thank you for watching today's show. And just so you know, we have an autoimmune workshop next Wednesday at 5.30. And uh, you want to come, typically our workshops on Tuesday, but next week is on Wednesday. It's a, a different day, so keep that in mind. And also we're gonna be the, at the East Valley Health Expo uh, on November, November 4th. Uh, so I'll put a link to that event in the uh, comment in the post here so you can click on it and see what the show is about. I'm going to be speaking at the expo as well. Two different talks in that expo, uh, one on thyroid, one on autoimmune. So please tell your friends and family about it. Have them come out to the expo. To, I love to meet them, discuss with them uh, if they have any questions, and uh, deliver these information-packed talks that hopefully will just get the word out that let you know that there are things that you can do to help you get better. A lot of times with natural medicine, many of the stuff that's pushed out there is just folklore without any explanation for why things work. And my goal is to help help our audience to learn why things work instead of just what to do, but why they work. So that'll help you to become better consumers and help you to get yourself better as well. Again, uh, what I also want to tell you is that we uh, have a lot of people that's been referred to us lately from like hairdressers, <laughs> from like massage therapists because they watch it and they're talking, telling their client to look us up because they just love our video. So what I want to ask is if you know anybody who is just really struggling with chronic thyroid issue, chronic energy issues, chronic skin problem, digestion issues, they already been to like three, four different doctors, maybe try some natural stuff, nothing's working, please send them our way. You'll be doing them a huge favor by sending them to someone who really cares, who really knows what they're doing, really knows what they're talking about, and we're gonna make, we're just gonna take great care of them, and you're gonna be proud uh, that you send them to us. That you're gonna, we're gonna make sure we do everything we can to make you be the hero, and that you look good. So, we take referrals. Please refer your friends and family who have issues, a health problem, or health challenges to us. We will love to take care of them, and uh, usually we uh, have some type of thank you gift for referring people to us. So make sure you tell them that you sent them, so we can track this stuff. Okay. Again, I want to thank you for watching today's show, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week at the Ask Dr. Khan Show.